Taylor Hall joins us, MVP with the New Jersey Devils. A couple of years ago, started his career in Edmonton, now with Arizona, and joining us from Toronto. So if you can all follow that on a map, uh, good, good on you. Taylor, uh, interesting debates and conversations that uh, you guys have. Uh, did, did you take in anything unique from your perspective as an MVP-level player watching the documentary and learning more about Michael Jordan behind the scenes? Um, I mean, obviously, just the, the drive and determination that he had. Um, you know, I thought the series was so well done and, and really showed, um, obviously, the, the competitive spirit that he had, but also, you know, how he was, he was able to, to rise, um, to, to get his teammates to rise to the occasion and uh, improve their play. But, um, you know, I think it was so interesting to see their team dynamic and, and, uh, and see that not everyone – you know, got along, you know, a hundred percent all the time. It was, it was all about winning and it was all about pushing yourself to the limit. And, uh, I, I don't know if that would, that would be, uh, that would be okay in today's day and age, but certainly back then, I think athletes were a little bit more different. Um, they were coached differently and you saw that a lot. So, um, definitely an interesting case. And, and for, for someone born in 1991, um, I didn't have the appreciation mm. for, the athleticism that Michael Jordan had. I thought he was more of a shooter, um, but I got to see what he was like, especially early in his career with, with, uh, with how athletic he was. So that was interesting. You speak to us from the home of the current NBA champions outside of Toronto area there as uh, you're back in Canada. So you were in Arizona. I think you were, uh, you were hanging out at Austin Matthews place. Was that right? Yeah. Yeah. I was living at his house there. He's got a, uh, He's got a nice place, um, you know, pool in the backyard, putting green, um, the work. So that was uh, that was nice of him to, to let me stay there, and it worked out well. He came he came right back to, to Arizona when the uh, when the pandemic started, and, and I made my way back to Toronto. So um, hopefully, when the season starts again, we'll make that move um, again. Do you leave anything in the house as like a thank you gift for let me crash at your pad during quarantine? Uh, I didn't leave anything, um, but I, I thought of a couple, uh, a couple of gifts. I think there's an area where he could, uh, he has basically everything, but there's an area where I think a dartboard would go really well. So hopefully I can get maybe a customized one for, for him when I leave. Uh, I hope he's not watching. I hope we didn't give away the secret, uh, right. just there, uh, for you. So now you're back in Canada and, uh, I would imagine that crossing the border here, there's a quarantine issue that you're going to have for a little bit. Now there's a question of if, hopefully, when the league starts up, coming back to the U.S. to play. So how much do you have to factor in all that when you just determine where am I going to stay until we have an idea of what's going to happen next? Yeah, I mean, there's there's so many moving parts, as you guys know. Um, I'm not really sure what the situation will be when um, when the time comes that I'm called to go back to Arizona, but, um, you know, the, the people at the league, they've been great. Uh, they have the, you know, some of the toughest jobs in the world right now, deciding on when to come back and, and the logistics of it all. So, um, I know that, you know, when I came back to Canada here, I had to do a two week quarantine and I'm pretty sure they were tracking our phones and, and things like that. So, um, you stay in your house, you do your part. And when it's time to come out, you, you do that. But, um, you know, I think people are starting to see that the, the world is, is getting back to a more normal place and certain states are opening up, um, you know, restaurants and, and all that kind of thing. So um, just have a little bit more patience and hopefully everything is um, is back to some kind of normalcy and we can get back playing hockey again, whether it's in front of fans or not. Well, this is an interesting scenario because we don't know the format. Right now, your team, the Coyotes, in the regular playoff setting would be four points out. But this 2014 format that's been talked about, you guys would be in. What's the scuttlebutt amongst the teammates and your guys' group chat and talking about how this thing may restart? Yeah, I mean, uh, we're one of the teams that's a, an interesting case. Um, you know, I, I think, you know, if we would have won a couple games before this all happened, it would have been uh, – um, you know, a different scenario. Maybe we'd be only two points out of the playoffs as is, but um, that's the way it goes. I think, you know, there's a lot of things that can happen um, leading up to the playoffs. You, you've seen, um, you know, I remember watching um, Edmonton back in, I, I think it was 2006. They, you know, they finished 9-1 and one to, to end their regular season and they ended up 
you know, going to game seven of the finals. And uh, so there's a lot of things that can happen. And I think it's important for, for teams to get a chance. But, you know, in saying that, I would understand if, if we weren't included, if they just wanted to go to a 20 team and, and go from there, you, you got to understand what, where they're coming from. So um, obviously, I think at the end of the day, I would love to play hockey for the Coyotes again this year and, and finish what we started. But we'll have to see what happens. I got a minute. Two quick questions. As a player, uh, what do you need to feel comfortable about and with to get back on the ice and compete given the changed world of COVID-19? Uh, to be honest, I'm pretty good with everything. You know, I, I'm comfortable taking a risk and coming back to play. Um, you know, I think we, you know, we take risks every day with, uh, with what we do. And, and I think certainly there, there are risks in, involved with, with everything going on. But, um, you know, I'd, I'd be willing to put that aside and, and hopefully play hockey again this year. I, I miss it a lot and, and I miss competing and, and being around the guys. And I know that, um, you know, they're not just going to feed us to the wolves. They're going to they're going to set up regulations for us and they're going to have testing involved and, and make sure it's as safe as possible for us. And I think that's that's what we all want. And I think that's good for me. And last one for you, 28. I mentioned Edmonton winning the Hart Trophy with the Devils, traded to Arizona, free agent at the end of this season, whenever this season ends. And it might be done if there's not an expanded playoff. Uh, what do you see for your future next year and beyond that? Yeah, I think it's it's a tough spot to be in. Um, you know, I've had a great time playing with the Coyotes and, and meeting everyone here and, and talking to John and Rick and the coaching staff. Um, you know, I think we have a great relationship, but, you know, with everything going on, we, we don't know what the outlook is for the future. And I think both sides are, are talking a little bit, but um, it's important to, to know what the future looks like and to know what, you know, uh, you know when free agency could possibly be and, and what the outlook is. So, um, there's still time to, to have those talks, and I think we have a really good relationship on both sides, so we'll see where it goes. Well, you look like you're ready to go hit the uh, little white ball. I know you're out there in Toronto. It's actually nice in this part of the world, so hit them straight. Thanks for a few minutes. We hope to see you back on the ice this season, and good luck wherever you end up next year. Hi, I'm Mike Tirico, and thanks for watching. Make sure to hit subscribe for the latest news and highlights from NBC Sports.